Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Intervention Part 4. Enjoy. There was so much he wanted to say, so many questions he wanted to ask, but you really didn't look like you were in the mood, stumbling along as he dragged you off to his place. Home sweet home, he said sarcastically as he grabbed the rusty doorknob and yanked on it, the rust crunching as he pulled the door open. In you go, this is your doomed castle where you stay with the fire-breathing dragon. He illuminated the way with a flash of his blue fire and let out a small unhinged laugh at his own joke. You could have cared less where you were staying and just headed for the closest bed-like feature in the house that happened to be an old couch, but Darby grabbed you before you flopped down on it. You're in the bedroom. Get gone, he growled, pulling you back from the old lounge and pointing you off down the hallway. Don't even think about sliding out the window. I've got this place booby-trapped. Try and escape and this whole house goes up in smoke. What if that's what I want? You mumbled. But you didn't want to take Darby out with you. That's not what you wanted. You were just bluffing, and he knew it. Walking to the room, you just headed in and face planted down on the bed. It smelled charred, like Darby, and you inhaled deeply, tears springing up in your eyes again as you settled in for the foreseeable future. Who knows how long he was going to keep you there. Hawks flew back to your place after leaving you in Darby's care and used his feather to pick your lock and let himself in. Whistling happily he to himself, he strolled down to your room and searched for a bag to pack some of your belongings in and found one in the wardrobe, pulling it out and then grabbing some of your clothes to put in it. Bras, underwear. He held up a lacy little pair that you owned and blushed a little as he put it in the bag, the sight of the sexy undergarments triggering him to recall a memory from training days. Where's Yin? He had asked his roommate Darby as he walked into the government facility training bunk room. Darby was on his bed reading comic books and didn't even look up as the winged hero in training entered. How would I know where she is? I don't have tabs on her, he said blandly as he kept his eyes on the comic strip before him. Mm, Hawks hummed. The only place I haven't looked is the girls' bathroom. Why don't you go and walk in there then, bird brain? Darby asked sarcastically. Mm, might actually, Hawks said and then left the room. Darby put his comic book down and looked at the open door that Hawks had left through. Sure he's not going to, he thought as he got up off the bed and followed a little way after Hawks. You had just finished having a shower and were putting your underwear on when you caught sight of your reflection in the mirror. Yuck, you thought, eyes glued to the scales across your stomach and down over one hip. Then your eyes caught on the lacy underwear that you were wearing. The colour looked gorgeous against your skin tone that wasn't covered in scales and you wondered how you would look if you had perfect skin. I wish I just looked normal. I wish I didn't have these scars. Your face fell into a disappointed scowl and you crossed your arms across your chest. Whoa, you heard a voice say softly from behind you. You spun around in surprise to see a teenage Hawks poking his head through the bathroom door, bright eyes sparkling at you as you stood there in bra and undies. Get out, you shouted. I don't wanna, he replied in a dreamy voice, his eyes glossing over your perfect form. I said get out, you screamed at him, picking up your hairdryer and throwing it at him. He quickly snapped out of his little gazing session and barely missed being clipped in the face by the hairdryer as he slammed the door closed on himself. But the image of you standing there looking gorgeous in your lacy underwear was forever burned into his memory. A core memory had been created, and from then on he always looked for your body and other girls that he'd been with, but none had been a match. He had loved the flecks of colour in your scales. They reminded him of his feathers in some light, how they were different shades of colour in them. It had been very aesthetically pleasing to his eye to see the lace over them. He cleared his throat and kept packing your bag. Then once he was done, he walked to the kitchen to get your phone and keys. As he reached out for your phone, it lit up, showing that you had five missed calls and two texts from your ex. Think you're too good to pick up my calls, the message read. Hawks's wings ruffled slightly. No one spoke to you that way and got away with it. It was because of this arsewipe that you were in this state. Mustering all of his self-control, he picked up your phone and put it in his pocket, not acting on his desires to reply this POS and give him a piece of his mind. He closed the door behind him as he left your place and made sure it was locked, then took to the skies and headed to Darby's hideout. Darby checked on you multiple times that night, but made it look like he was just doing something else. You were out cold, tears stained down your face as you slept. He had always liked how you looked, even though you said you hated your scales, and his turquoise eyes glossed over you as he left the room. Stupid girl, 
He thought his anger actually being directed at your boyfriend. But it was that walking turd that put her in this state. He had just walked out into the living room when he sensed someone at the front door and went to check. There was Hawk standing there with a bag and a goofy grin on his face. Hi hubby, I'm home, Hawks greeted. Didn't I already toss you out last week? Darby asked as he let Hawks in. I'm like a boomerang, I just keep coming back, Hawks replied with a smile. If you wouldn't, you ego stuffed turkey, leave her bags and go, Darby said, following Hawks into the lounge area. How is she? Hawks asked in a low tone as he put your bags down on the ground. Not good, Darby said honestly. It's her ex, Hawks commented. From what I gather, he's mostly emotionally abusive, but she did have marks on her occasionally. Why don't you step in then, dumbass hero? You're supposed to save people if I recall correctly, Darby said sarcastically. I did try. She maintained everything was fine. It's hard to help a fish swim when someone else has cut its fins off, Hawks commented. Find the someone who's cutting the fins off and cremate them, Darby said darkly. Uh, unfortunately, there are rules. Screw the rules. Villains have got it right. At least we protect those we care about. There was a steely standoff between the two, both boys desperately wanting to help you to save you, and tension was running high. You said X, Darby commented, averting his cold gaze from Hawks's. Yeah, she said, but I don't know what happened. Hmm. Darby grunted, leave it with me. Ah, uh, we love protective boys. On to chapter five. We go see you tomorrow.